We have a great show coming up for you on Sports Central. Hi, everybody. I'm Mark Jackson. Brian Graydon from the Lakeland Runners Club, newly inducted Hall of Famer Nancy Denton, and we have Tracy Mattis, former executive director of the World Olympians Association. Stick around, everybody, for this week's edition of Sports Central. Hey everybody and welcome to Sports Central. I'm Mark Jackson, my co-host to my right to your left, Mr. Hank Longo. Hello everybody, how are you? Oh hey. wow. Fun show today, so I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely, we're deep into summer and the summer heat has taken its toll on a few of our athletes and a few athletes worldwide as well, including in the NFL, but they're feeling a different type of heat and that's Aaron Hernandez and the rest of the crew, but the NFL, Hank, it's hard to believe that we're a month out from preseason starting. Yeah, it just seems like it got over, and here we are getting going again. But, you know, the great basketball championships, the Stanley Cup just ended, yeah. and our big event of the year, which was a great success, was the Polk County All Sports Awards. And what a fantastic evening, and congratulations the Hall of to Fame you. induction ceremony. The Hall of you, Fame induction. The crew did a great job, a great event again. Congratulations. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun, and it's really a testament to the business of sports. In the in Polk County and the yeah. talent, it's, it's, it's just phenomenal. You just think about, you know, some of the inductee. Of course, you had Al Kaline, you yeah. know, Hall of Famer, Major League Baseball. Baseball. And you had, I mean, these these type of people that were inducting into the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame. It's just like, wow, yeah. very unusual. Kind. I've said that for years. Though. I've said that for twenty some years. Is that this is an unusual county when it comes to yeah. uh, uh, human talent in the sports endeavor. Well, we've got some great guests today, and our first guest uh, going to take us in the sport of running. Well, we were talking off camera. I wish we could have translated some of that. We'll bring some of it back. Uh, but the uh, opportunity to talk with Brian Graydon, who is, I'm not really sure if he does it full-time, part-time, you know, whatever. Maybe he doesn't sleep or whatnot. But Lakeland Runners Club, arguably one of the most successful running clubs in the country. You know, they, they do an awful yeah. lot of stuff. But I do have to mention one thing. The Hampton mm. Inn, Lakeland South, so, is uh, sponsor this sponsoring first and, and uh, helping promote this segment, and so we're thankful to them. Great place to stay yep. for athletes and business folks alike, or just a leisure traveler. Brian, welcome aboard. It's good to see you, and we've Thanks got a lot me. to talk about sure. because, uh, you know, not only you, but the organization, the Lakeland Runners Club, what an impressive track record you've had and uh, are continuing to develop. We were talking about the Watermelon mm -hmm. Series. Uh, my wife, Mary Beth, and her friends just rave about this year. Um, but it doesn't stop there. And you mentioned the uh, uh, Mayfair by the Lake race for the arts. No, no, not race for the arts, but May Mayfair 5K mm -hmm. was a huge success. 1,400 people. Yeah, the Mid Florida Mayfair 5K. The there full we go. Name you got it right. It. Yep. You know, I you did. Get, not. Just got to get the sponsors <laughs> in there, just like you guys do. Certainly. Um, yeah. Last year uh, we were about 1,201 finishers. Uh, this year we were 1,425. So a huge growth for us there, which we're very happy about. We tried to market it a little more outside of just the the Polk County area. See, we couldn't get some runners from the Tampa and Orlando areas to join us. So we had a little um, rise in the folks from outside of. Polk County, but it's just the biggest race in Polk County. Everyone loves it. It's not an easy course. It's a hot night always, but there's all the other festivities that go on after the race that I think really help draw the crowd out. You have the live music put on there along with the art festival. You have the fireworks. So it's a really great evening for not just the runners, but their families to come join them also. So. What is uh, inspiring people uh, to want to run more now? Nationwide, there's a definite rise in the running boom. There was the running boom back in the 70s. There was another one a little later on, and now we're currently in the midst of one. Um, nationwide, running is up in most distances, but especially the half marathon. That's the largest growth as far as any distance of a race. 13.1. That's, 13 that's, a, that's a long run. I mean... It, it's th it's, it's great it? because it gives folks a huge challenge to shoot for. It's not quite the full 26.2 miles, which is hard for a lot of people to do, not just physically, but also just... The, the, a hard time driving 26 <laughs> <but> miles <laughs> in your car. Yeah, right? and the what do I do? Okay, I'm 13 miles. I got 13 miles to go here. It's a lot of time you put into training and time away from your family, that kind of thing. So 13.1 offers a great challenge for people that it's a little easier to fit into, you know, busy lifestyles of today. Watermelon series start. I mm -hmm. want to jump back to that sure. real quick. Um, I guess because I get so much of it at home. But 
it's, it's funny because uh, my wife started actually, uh, you know, in this these type of races about a, year, a little over a year ago, and a year ago she she walked virtually all of it. Now she runs all of it. She's got her time uh, up to like 33 minutes or something like that in the water, and I mean, just absolutely thrilled to death. And so every time, you know, it's a race against yourself. It's not so much a race against others. And, and the great thing about the Watermelon Series, it's a low frills, low cost event that goes on throughout the summer, four different races. So like you're saying, folks can come out, kind of establish a time that first race mm -hmm. and work to get faster. And it's big for families, it's big for first timers. Every year, the amount of people who contact me saying, I've never done this before. What can we do? What do we need to do? You know, saying it's my first race ever. So it's nice to see a growth of just new runners coming out to join us. Um, once again, it's low cost, it's $30 for all four races. And that's kind of the way it was set up when Rob Mason and Dave Coral started it 18 years ago. It's just a low frills thing to keep folks running during the summer when it is so hot, like you mentioned at the start of the program there. It's it's tough to run in this heat, but it gives folks something to shoot for. And you say you got families in there. You get a lot of kids that yes, participate yes, in this? And yes. what kind of ages are they? I think the youngest one we had sign up was four. Oh my God. And then, you know, they go all the way through. I think the oldest folks we have this year are 79, I think. Wow. So got them all throughout there. You'll see that the nice thing I like is certainly you've got folks who come out and run fast by themselves, but you'll see the parents running along with their kids and you holding their the, hands even as they go. You know what's funny is that these kids, you know, and, I, and I, I haven't been one this year. I went to two last year. Heaven forbid I actually run in them, but I, you know, I watched, you know, cheer the friends on and all this type of stuff. And you watch they these They have, little, you know, medics there. So yeah, oh, I know that, yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> my walker doesn't move quite that fast. <laughs> your little horn on it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, here oh, I go, oh. here I go. But if you watch the kids, you know, and, and you know that my favorite interviews are, 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 with, are with children, but you watch, um, you know, the way they run, and, and they'll run and they'll just go really fast, and then they just stop and, like, they'll see a bird up in a tree. And they're pointing at the bird, and then they're just talking, and they're running with their parents, the parents pass them by, and then they run, and then they run past their parents. You know, it's hilarious. <laughs> just little kids, they just, hey, they're just out getting exercise. In today's society with obesity, what is it now like? In yeah. children, over 30%. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, it's fantastic. And to segue along with the kids, that one of our main focuses we've started is our kids running program. Mm -hmm. It's Tuesday nights at uh, Lakeland High School track at 5.30. Coach Grace Owen goes out there So you just go to Lakeland kids. High School at 5.30 every Tuesday? Tuesday night. You okay. do not have to be a member of the club. It's open to anyone in the community. It's uh, basically elementary school age kids is, is who comes out for that. She averages around 50 kids oh my gosh. a week, and it's been up as high as 70. Parents have to fill out a, um, a waiver while they're there, and we do ask they stay there at the track during the workout. And some okay. parents will get involved and run with their kids it's a great turnout we have and that's our kind of way to you know get youngsters involved not only like you said in exercise but in the running community because I don't plan to be the president of this organization forever so we've got to get somebody to eventually want to take it over so we try to grow them young and get them involved with running and with the club and the running community and okay. let them grow from there that's fantastic okay obviously this is uh, uh, more of an avocation than a vocation for you what do you do for a job I'm in education I'm okay. currently the Dean of Students at Southwest Middle School Oh, so once really? again, involved with middle school age kids, which to segue to our next new program, we also have is a middle school age running program during the summer. Okay. Uh, middle school cross country will start next year as an extracurricular activity for the kids. So uh, we started a program to kind of, if you want to say phase them into it, where they can come out and join us, Holloway Parks, uh, Holloway Park, excuse me, Saturday mornings at uh, 8 a.m. So we meet out there and kind of take them through a, a little run and get kids that age acclimated. With have you been out there? No. I got to tell you something, Ed Holloway, um, mm -hmm. You know, he owns uh, Sandland Ranch RV campground, and they have all sorts of stuff out there. Really cool. But he is a very giving man and uh, has donated uh, his properties and, and so on and so forth. They have a track to the, I want to say to the north of where the Sandland Ranch is, cross-country track and this type of stuff. Holy smokes. I mean, he's really giving back to the community. A guy that's giving back, you know, just not... Not a hoarder, not a taker. Mm -hmm. Gives back. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And, yeah, it's nice I can't to have, say enough about Ed. Right, so. it's nice to have something solely dedicated for cross-country running. Not mm -hmm. a lot of communities have something like that, and the fact that he's given that land to be used for that, and it is such a great place for it with the terrain that it offers, it's, it's a nice thing to have in our town. Yeah, Mallory White's dad. Paul um, White, yep. Mm -hmm. Paul, I saw him at the, um, the Hall of Fame and uh, All Sports Awards the other night, and you know, he said, of course, Mallory got an award. She's 
I mean, I remember you and I interviewing mm -hmm. her when she had braces and she was like that tall mm -hmm. and was setting all these records in AAU and now she's like that tall, <laughs> you know, and I didn't even recognize, I hadn't seen her in years. Right, Paul helps put on the Jim Ryan Invitational the cross country meet for high schools and yep. kind of colleges and middle school kids are run out there also. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a great event. Cool, cool stuff. We got another one coming up, the, the 2013 uh, Arching Quad. Aching Quad. Aching Quad. Yeah, that's, that. for, that's for people who are either really obsessed or for really crazy. For me. <laughs> no, my, no, you're fine. It's, it's four races in 24 hours. Friday night you run a 5K, then Saturday morning you run a one-mile race, a couple hours later you run a two-mile race, and Saturday night you run a 5K again. So you're, you're really working hard if you're running all those races as hard as you can in a 24-hour period. But the folks who come out, they're, they're devoted. They love it. And what kind of, I mean, when you've got the, you know, the mile has always been, you know, the race. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have those kind of qualified runners that are really trying to run a fast mile or... Well, they're trying to run it as fast as they can. Most of them aren't mile specialists or anything. Okay. It's, it's the 5K runners in town or that okay. sort of thing who'll come out. But you'll still see some good times. You'll see some low five-minute times that folks that's will show fast, up and run. Really? Yeah, and that's after coming off a hard race the night before and knowing they've got a, you know two more races later that day. So they come out and they run hard. Now, now, what, so. Where do they do this one, though? The, the, the uh, 5Ks are both around Lake Hollingsworth, the Friday night and the Saturday night races. Oh, okay. The mile race on Saturday morning is around Lake Morton. Okay. And then the two-mile race uh, goes around uh, Lake Hunter. Okay. We start at the park right there and go all the way around Lake Hunter. Brian, what got you interested in running? Because, I mean, something, there's a passion there to dedicate the time. I mean, like you say, you, you know, you're teaching and involved with the kids at, as your career during the day. So this is one of those things that you're doing in your free time. I, I played tennis growing up and then got to the point where the shoulder hurt too bad to do that, so I took up running, and it's, it really, running is a drug. It's not just a hobby. It's, it's addictive. It really becomes a part of your life and something you want to do each and every day. I currently can't run right now due to a knee injury, so it's, it's killing me to just watch other people run and go to all our events and not be able, not be able to participate myself because it really gets in your blood. Really so when you're does. doing these events, you're running along with everyone else? A couple of them. Mayfair, I've, I've run in the past along with directing it this year. I wasn't it's able to. It's just a little too, too yeah, much going too much. on. Watermelon yeah. series, though, I'm, I'm just working hard through that one the whole time. Well, if you're just joining us, uh, uh, shame on you, but Brian Graydon took the Lakeland Runners Club, and he took over as president in 2010, from 200 people to a little over 450 today. One of the reasons he was named president, president, president yeah. of the year from or outstanding club president of the year in the 2013 Roadrunners Club of the America. Americas, yeah. So uh, again, it's a, a testament to the not only the quality of running here, but then if somebody asked me the question, and before we we have to go to break here before uh, our director over here uh, decapitates pulls the plug. Us. Yeah, pulls the plug or gets the hook out one or the other. But per capita in the uh, in the city of Lakeland, are there more runners in the city of Lakeland than anywhere else in the state of Florida? I don't know that specifically, but as far as our club membership goes for a town our size, it's it's significant. So okay. it's nice to see. Okay, well, could be hearsay, but if it isn't true, it should be. And Brian, if folks want to <laughs> get a hold of you, get involved in this sure. and run, how do they contact you? LakelandRunnersClub.org has all the information on all of our events and all of our activities we have throughout the week. And my email is listed there as contact information. Happy to answer any questions anyone may have. Well, super duper. Thanks so much. And hey, congratulations. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, appreciate you joining us. Well, everyone, while we're on the subject of running, we've got a pretty, or we have some pretty good footage from where else? Well, Bach Tower. Yeah, they run out there. In fact, they had the Carillon 5K recently, and we have some great shots from the Carillon 5K. Check this out. Hank and Mark, we'll be back right after this.
race takes place in the gardens and on our brand new preserve trails. You're going to go up, you're going to go down, you're going to be on pavement, you're going to be on mulch. Um, it's actually really challenging. It's not like your regular everyday 5K. It's only the second year we've done it, but we're really proud to partner with FPRA. They're a great organization, and basically together we can offer the community a really great, special, unique 5K. Well, this is our second year of the Carillon Classic 5K run, and last year we had about 200 runners. This year we've had over 300, and we're thinking possibly we've reached 400. It brings people from all over Polk County. This isn't just a run for Lake Wales or for Winter Haven. This is a run for all of Polk County. So it really brings people from all over the greater Polk County area to Bach Tower Gardens. Polk County, being this a Memorial Day weekend, we really wanted to have this event on Memorial Day to make it a destination event. So folks don't necessarily have to leave Polk County and, and celebrate Memorial Day somewhere else. They can come out to Bock Tower Gardens. It's a great day. All runners got to uh, enter Bock Towers for free and bring their family. So it's, it's a wonderful event and of course it's, it's supporting a great cause. We see about uh, 600 runaway and homeless youth each year. The kids that are there are from ages from 10 to 17. Uh, they go to public school and uh, we try to take care of kids who, for no fault of their own, have no place to live, no place to go. It's a wonderful event to be here and it helps support the youth in this community, both Polk Highlands and Hardy Counties. A lot of people have heard us say Edward One, Bach two, three, wanted to four. make the world a bit better or more beautiful just because he had lived in it. And we take that mission to our programs and our events every single day. And what the Harris Shelter does by taking in all the foster children is just, it's so needed in the community and we have a huge education mission. So it just goes hand in hand with the gardens wanting to be a cultural institution that supports education and they have these children who have a need and so we bring people together to fulfill that need and raise money for them. beautiful course. There's none like it here in the area. We have the terrain, the gardens, the view of the tower, and the great weather and the great community. So that's uh, what Carolina Classic is really all about. Hey everybody and welcome back to Sports Central. If you're just joining us, I'm Mark Jackson. To my right, Mr. Hank Longo. Hello, everybody. Hey, we want to welcome you to our second segment of Sports Central and thank the folks at Hollywood Tinning and Signs for sponsoring this segment. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Little, uh, little snippets of the uh, Carillon 5K. Mm -hmm. You know, and Brian Graydon, what a great, uh, what a great guest. And Lakeland Runners Club, yeah. phenomenal yeah, success really, under his, really his direction. Really doing a fantastic job. Oh, absolutely. Well, speaking of successes, we recently, as Hank mentioned a little bit earlier, the Hall of Fame and All Sports Awards were held last Tuesday, Tuesday, night, yeah. Tuesday night, and that was, I believe, the 25th. But what an evening. More than 500 people turned out at the Lakeland Center. Bright House Sports Networks televised the event and the, uh, the induction ceremony and the awards and all of that type of thing. What a great evening. But one of the guests and one of the Hall of Fame honorees, inductees, I should say, was Nancy Denton, and she is also the coach of the Lake Wales softball team. Not satisfied with that, just also, or also brought along the assistant coach, Mike Settle. Nancy, Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. It's well, you guys have a lot to, to celebrate here. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal that uh, uh, not only were you inducted into the Hall of Fame, but you were the, uh, the state champions. I mean, that's 
pretty impressive in softball. It, it's one, it was it was exciting. It was a fantastic run. Um, you know, you have to be you have to be good. You have to be uh, driven, and you have to be lucky. So, <laughs> and we, uh, our kids worked hard, and they, um, uh, you know, were driven. They knew they had a goal. They met it, and we had some breaks along the way too. So, you have to have all three. Well, uh, you know, in Florida, I mean, if you look at the competition, like with Bartow and the great program they've had, mm -hmm. and and, mm -hmm. and uh, the other schools in the state, to win a state championship in Florida is pretty monumental because the competition is so fierce. And uh, what were some of the special parts of the season, you think, that made this team so, you know, such a uh, a great team to win the state championship? I, I, I'm not. I'm not sure. We knew we had good athletes going into the program. Um, we, uh, but something started clicking. The pitching started uh, really getting good, and uh, the chemistry. We moved some kids around defensively. The chemistry started changing, and and then the kids realized they had a chance. And um, you know, and that and that's a hard thing. The hardest thing to do about winning a state tournament is getting out of Polk County because we have some of the best yes. softball in the state and so uh, that, that's the first goal is get out of Polk County. <laughs> <laughs> Play somebody else besides yeah. these teams in Polk yeah. County. Because, because the, you know, the rest of the coaches, the schools in Polk County set the standard pretty high and uh, so we all kind of help each other and, and uh, make each other better. So, Okay, Mike. Got a question for you. This is, uh, I'm sure, a frequent question. So, you're a guy. You're coaching these young ladies softball. Mm -hmm. What kind of challenges does that present you? Because, you know, assuming you've coached baseball and some other sports and so on, it coaching was, girls, coaching boys. Well, What's the difference? It was definitely different. Um, when I uh, started coaching with Nancy three years ago, it was. I had coached baseball uh -huh. at the high school, and uh, making the change, a lot of people say you're going to have a hard time with the girls. There's got to talk to them different, for sure. You can <laughs> tell guys some things that you can't quite say to the girls. And, uh, but I'm going to tell you, the girls work just as hard, if not harder, than the boys did. And there's been some good athletes on the boys' side at Lake Wells, too, but the group that we have the last couple years, been a pleasure working with them and her. Unbelievable, unbelievable. I mean, give, us, give me some examples. You know, you uh, are, are they a little bit more, you have to be a little softer in your approach? Do you have to be maybe a little tougher on them? It's different for each one of them. Okay. There, uh, one thing I never saw in, when I coached baseball was when I got on a girl, I never, I mean a guy, I never saw tears. Yeah. <laughs> you get on a girl sometimes you see tears and as a dad, I have a daughter too, and that kind of tugs at you a little bit, <laughs> you know. And uh, so I had to change a little bit of the way I coached, but I still uh, strive for them to be the best that they can be. But you got to do things different, <laughs> for sure. Well, of course, you had a good coach, and Nancy's what has it been twenty-seven years that you've coached. Yep. Yep. Oof. How do you keep Man. that? How do you keep that fire? I mean, uh, keep wanting to get out there year after year. Well, I, I, I'm always learning. And, and uh, each group of kids brings a different, a little bit different, They're, everybody's different, you bring a little different set of problems and I'm always trying to think of different ways to communicate with kids. Some, some kids understand things other, that others don't, you know, and, um, and then I always tell my kids that go to college, bring back drills, so I'm always trying to learn new drills to incorporate new drills and, and then you just, uh, you know, the new group of kids that comes in brings new excitement. As well, so it's just uh, somebody said, "Aren't are, when are you going to finish?" And I said, "Well, have you, have you ever thought about stopping or retiring?" retiring. I said, "Sometimes I th I think about it, and I think, well, when this crop gets and they graduate, then that that'll be the end of it, and then there's another crop, and you think, well, maybe when this group goes a little bit more, you know." So it's just kind of, I, I just told Mike, I said, "Just make sure, Mike, that you know." I'm not in a wheelchair and I don't have cataracts or something, so that's, then it's time to go. So, <laughs> so he's not. Sometimes he calls me Bobby Bowden. He's a Seminole friend, so sometimes we refer to each other, him, me mostly as Bobby Bowden, but uh, 
but anyway. Well, if it's what you love to do, why I quit? It. I mean, if it's your passion it's, and that's what you want to do. You, the, yeah, you know, look at Hank. Like, I mean, he's still skiing and he's like 70. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> barely walking, but it's my yes. passion. Yeah. It's my passion. You and I have to go in a home or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. He is in one. Bang! <laughs> 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 hits that one out <laughs> over the fence. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's hard to quit something that you love. You know, what do you what do you replace that with? You know, if you if you give up something that you're just so dedicated to, you know, then what do you do? I don't know. I don't know, and I love it, and so I'm here for another year anyway. So. Well, you know, Hank and I talked. That's that's kind of an interesting. Uh, it, you don't get this a lot on the uh, on a lot of the talk shows and stuff, but uh, the locker room environment. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, that's in sports. That's what I miss the most: is the camaraderie, you know, the joking around, the having fun, and, and all those types of things. But the locker room is also, in many ways, uh, some will argue, the foundation for a successful team. You know, that chemistry that's built, the the uh, uh, trust, and all of those types of things is built in the locker room. And when I obviously I'm using locker room mm -hmm. as off the field, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it could be in a locker room, it could be somewhere else. But uh, in your experience, what, what do you see? What Absolutely have you seen? true. Absolutely, especially with girls, because we women tend to be cliquish mm -hmm. and and sometimes mean. And um, and in on a team, you have to trust. It's the same thing as I did used to do a little community theater work. You, you have to trust. You have to trust your teammates that they're going to make the play. Or if that I miss a ball, I've got somebody behind me that's going to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Same thing on a, on a stage. You have to trust that somebody else has their line or they're going to cover for you if you forget your line. But it's, uh, it's trust is huge. And you don't have to love each other off the field, but you really have to really have to get along together. And, on the field. and I would think in the coaching part, that's where it, it gets to be delicate as having to manage mm -hmm. that and making mm -hmm. sure that they are getting along and trying to be there to help settle things down when they might get a little bumpy and, and there's that uh, psychological part that goes it's along true. with it's it. True. That's, that's and, very And you have that intense. with women. I think, Mike, you would agree that guys kind of oh, yeah. hash it out and they get, they, they, they're done <laughs> and they go on. Yeah. Girls, not so much, you know. So I've seen that movie before. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mean sports. <laughs> yeah. Mike, you you know, obviously going from baseball to softball, the uh, the hitting's a little bit different. You know, with 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 baseball, you get set, mm -hmm. you get to anchor and all this type of stuff. What's the difference between coaching baseball with guys and coaching batting for girls in softball? I mean, there's there's some there's some things that are different. Fundamentally, the principles are the same, but there's what makes a good hitter, what makes a bad hitter, what fundamentally makes it, makes it tougher or easier to coach? Well, I, I think the, the, the speed of the game, uh, softball, of course, you don't have quite the reaction time um, as you do. But, I mean, like you said, the basics are the same. You, I mean, you got to get your hip started first and your hands follow. Mm -hmm. And if your head's staying still, you should be a successful hitter. Um, some of them do it and some of them don't, but that's at, you know, at both, at, you know, boys or girls. Um, I, I really think the speed of the game, softball, we finished a game this year in an hour. Mm -hmm. We had an hour game this year, seven innings. Baseball, wow. you're, gonna, you're out there two and a half, three hours. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of times the tension span, you know, the tension span of the boys is uh, will wander during the you know the game, but in the softball, the girls seem to think you know they're right on top of things. But the thing that fascinates me about uh, girls softball is how these gals can pitch a ball. I mean, it am amazes me of the speed that they generate and and how you can be so consistent with that mm -hmm. that rotating arm and movement and just to be able I don't to hold it, it in there. <laughs> You know, and it's and it's you know you know and to 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 throw the ball underarm like that and still be able to be so accurate to where it's going is and it, and that the speed that it goes um, it fascinates me. Yeah, that whole reaction time we were talking about too is is phenomenal. That's uh, 
that to me is the biggest difference. You know, is that it, it's you've got a shorter distance, but you've got you know the speed is is there. You know, it's 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 different. It's it is just different. I've been challenged before. You, know, you can get up there. You know, you play ball and all this stuff. Yeah, well, <laughs> I haven't done it yet. Slow pitch, maybe. Nancy, Mike, congratulations. Wow, what a year. And uh, year. We, we look forward to having you back next year. This, yeah. this, is awesome. this is awesome stuff. You've done a great job. And One quick question. We, we have to ask this before we can go. I, being inducted into the Hall of Fame, just uh, I, I, your speech was beautiful. And Thank you could you. see the emotion and kind of the disbelief that it was really happening and the it, it overwhelming it, feelings. It, it's unbelievable. I, I think I mentioned, you know, there are, there are an awful lot of people that spend a lot of time with kids in Polk County, in the state of Florida, all over the nation. And, but in Polk County in particular, you know, where we have so many good sports programs, to be singled out as one, you know, and be honored is just unbelievable. It's just really, really humbling. No, Long overdue. <laughs> That's great stuff. Thank That's, you. you know, but it's state's number two industry, and so that's another testament to the great to the sporting level events. that you've reached. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you knew that or not, but in the state of Florida, tourism is the number one industry. Sports is number two. I did not know that. I didn't either. Yep. Wow. It's, it's phenomenal. Wow. Real economic engine. Congratulations. Thank Thanks you so much. much. Thank, I, you. Uh, Thank you. Really appreciate Thank you. you guys being here. So. Thank you. Thank we you. loved it. Good. Well, ladies and gentlemen. Softball, a fantastic sport, and it's, it is a hot sport. Of course, in playing today, it's going to be really hot. But Iron Man 70.3, of course, last year we had Lance Armstrong, uh, not so much this year, but the numbers were higher, believe it or not. So we we're very pleased with that. More than 2,000 athletes at Lake Eva in Haines City. Check this out. This is fantastic stuff. Some great camera work for our PGTV camera crew. We'll be back right after this. Stay with us, everyone. Welcome to Ironman 70.3 Florida. Ironman's a, a triathlon event uh, hosted all around the country. We're here in beautiful Haines City, Lake Eva Community Center. approximately 2,000 competitors from around the country, as well as over uh, five or six countries. with Ironman is it's got a great brand, great great presence in the community, but it's also a 70.3 event is a is a, an event that they can uh, they can 
uh, pretty much qualify for the championships in Hawaii. Hat, bang, bang, hat, hat, bang. Dimming on the stages, ask me where my brain is. Well, it's up in heaven, guess it's dancing with the angels. Hat, bang, bang, hat, hat, bang, bang. Hat, bang, bang, hat, hat, bang, bang. All these athletes are here prepared. They train year round to come to these beautiful spots just like uh, Haines City, Florida, and compete just to compete in Hawaii down the road. City's just, uh, just you know, in a great spot in Polk County. Polk County's home to so many great attractions. We've got Legoland. We're close to the Orlando attractions, Tampa, right in the middle of the state. It's easy to get to right off of I-4. Um, very family friendly. This this park specifically is family oriented. Uh, all the accommodations here are affordable, family family friendly atmosphere. Tenth Street, the roller coaster up. Now you you come from a rather hilly country in New Zealand. Do you think that the run sort of worked in your favor? Uh, I definitely like a tough course, but after trying to keep up with Dirk on the bike, I could definitely feel my legs starting to give way on that third lap around, uh, especially up here going up Tenth Tenth Street. There's two two decent climbs. Uh, I knew I just had to get to the top, and and then I could uh, pretty much pretty much roll downhill on the way home. Ironman 70.3 Florida fit into your competitive schedule? Um, I was uh, injured early season, so just getting back into full-on training, um, finally was able to run in April, so a little underdone, but um, it's always good just to throw yourself in a race and see where you're at. Um, you know, I really wanted to have a good bike out there because I've been biking a lot when I was injured, so happy with the performance. <laughs> everybody. Welcome back to Sports Central. We're on a roll today. Wow. Some well, outstanding you, running in that Ironman wore me out, but you know, yeah. hey, it was fun. <laughs> running in the, he was sitting in the back of a golf cart <laughs> following him is what he was doing. <laughs> Handing out little shots of vodka. They thought they were. <laughs> well, 
Heck, uh, one of our hey, uh, uh, great thanks. sponsors joining us, Sunsplash Vacation Homes. And Mike Eckersley and the crew. Yeah, and yeah. we can't thank them enough because it fits so well into this next segment. What a they nice are segment. so supportive of um, I'm going to set you up here okay. just beautifully because, as you all know, Hank is a, continues to be a very uh, world-class competitive water skier mm, and very you. involved in the uh, USA, excuse me, the AWS Water Ski Hall of Fame. Well, it just so happens that we have their executive, new executive director, and you're going to love her. Her name is Tracy Mattis, and she is, well, I'm going to let her tell you because it's really an interesting story about Olympianism internationally, nationally. Ladies and gentlemen, this is some great stuff. But Hank's really the key guy here, so, Hank? Okay. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> Tracy, great to have you with thank us. Thank you, great to be here. And uh, to give you folks a little background, uh, we have a new uh, executive director of the American Water Ski Educational Foundation and Hall of Fame, which uh, is really exciting because um, it's just going to kind of jump start this whole program, bring new life to it. and. And Tracy, uh, to get to talk to you about your experience and being a world-class athlete yourself and uh, being very involved with the Olympics and knowing how um, uh, an Olympic governing body works and all of that, you're really bringing a wealth of knowledge and experience to the sport of water skiing and uh, it's delighted to have you on board. Thank you, thank you, it's great to be here. Yes, I came from a, a track and field background, uh, seventh in the world in the 400 meter hurdles was uh, the best I've ever done um, in, in a couple Hall of Fames myself. But, you know, looking at this position, you know, bringing that, you know, from an athlete, I understand, you know, whether you're a skier, a biker, you know, whatever, runner, it doesn't matter. Everyone kind of can relate to that, you know, performance and all the things that go into training and all the things that need to do. And of course, the support from the governing bodies and the sponsors and, and of course, then worked uh, 15 years with the Olympic family and really got to understand the politics behind you know, uh -huh. various things, which, which we all know play a huge part in, in everything that we do, and kind of navigating around that and what sponsors look for and, and what they want their name on and the things that attract them. Um, as you know, being in sports marketing with the diversity of sports out there and, you know, the marketing potential, it's created a massive competition to attract and keep sponsors. So um, I think, you know, this was a great opportunity uh, to come to take this position. You know, it had been occupied for 32 years. So, <laughs> so um, you know, coming in from the outside, um, th there's a lot of potential there. And uh, look forward to bringing well, my experience to here. I mean, so some, of the, some of the stuff that, that you've hit on, you know, working with Olympic governing bodies <laughs> is totally different than working with other Organiz right. business organizations. Yes. It is a totally different animal. Right. And I am so glad she said that <laughs> because it gives some credence to what Polk County Tourism and Sports Marketing does every single day. And you talked about the politics, right. not from all the way up at the, in Colorado Springs sure. or the IOC, International Olympic Committee, but even down to the governing body level. Right. You know, it is so competitive. Very, very much so. And, um, but, you know, USA Water Ski has a great leader with Bob Crawley. They've got a great staff, um, great board members, and I'm very proud of our board of trustees on the foundation side mm -hmm. and our executive committees. And, and all of them are on board with, uh, right now, one of the first things I'm implementing as new executive director is putting together a four year strategic plan which I believe was something missing from the organization, and it's, it's typical of a lot of foundations out there. But you know, you want the bigger dollars and the bigger money um, in, in today's kind of marketing where they will require that strategic plan. And um, so we're in the middle of that right now. Hank is a member of our committee um, to represent, you know, bring the Polk County side to it mm -hmm. um, as we reach out within our own community and um, the water ski community, and then obviously on a bigger level to the Sponsors. We're glad to have some representation on that one because I tell you, you know, this uh, it's an Olympic uh, family organization, mm -hmm. part of the Olympic family, and bringing your perspective, um, business perspective, but as well as as an athlete, as an administrator, as a coach, is, is brings a whole new dimension to what um, the sport has enjoyed 
in the past. So it kind of mm -hmm. elevates right. the platform. And, and Hank, that's got to be a bit of a challenge for you guys because it's more of an open slate now, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's what's so interesting is is saying, okay, let's stop and take a look at what's gone on and kind of evaluate, you know, what do you think of the American Water Ski Educational Foundation? What do you think it is? Uh, you know, what does it mean to you and um, how can we get it to grow and how can we make the people that are members of USA Water Ski members of the Educational Foundation? And um, what can we do for the foundation to to bring awareness to everybody and get people to start to get involved and having a plan to actually, I mean the people on the board are so diversified and so successful and for the first time there's you know people talking about what can we do to you know get an idea to survey people to find out you know what what can we be where should we be going and what do you think of us and if you were a member before and you're not a member now right. why aren't you so it's a, a, a great uh, okay, process. Okay I'm going to ask the next logical on. of course everything's logical in my head. <laughs> 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 the next logical question to me is would that potentially mean a rebranding maybe even or even a new name it could be you know when you look at um, precedents of what's been successful when you look at governing bodies and their respective foundations whether it's USA Swimming the foundation USA track and field the foundation mm -hmm. um, there was a time when it was called AWS you know the American Water Ski Association mm -hmm. when the foundation was formed it was the American Water Ski so mm -hmm. it had that now being that USA Water Ski has taken over you know, it is, is a time to change the foundation name. So, because there's been, there's a lot of confusion out there. It's, here's USA Water Ski, but you're the American Water Ski. And that's fine for the older generation that kind of grew up through that, but we have a whole new generation. Like then, <laughs> yes, like, <laughs> oh, yes, I, I thought you meant you were talking about the new younger yeah. generation. Oh. I didn't say it, he did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's just on a roll today. Yeah. He is just a uh, spring chickens, you know. Yeah. We, uh, <laughs> yeah. He looks up at my yeah, gray area. Yeah, what's left of it? Well, I think that's uh, going to be a heck of an opportunity. And it, yes. You know, I think you bring in Hank's expertise and, and insights and and so on. But um, you know, the possibilities. It, talk to us a little bit about the foundation itself. You know, it says educational foundation. I, I don't see it so much as educational as I do promoting. The sport right. Of water well, and it, when it was chartered in 1968, I mean, it was chartered to support the USA water ski team yeah. and also create um, opportunities for skiers, people to get involved in skiing, and, and they had the educational mm -hmm. side of it. And the, from the educational perspective, we do provide, we just chose our seven scholarship winners. Mm -hmm. And I think that because there's, a, um, there's not a lot of collegiate teams like there is track you know there's certain schools that have it and some that don't so this actually gives water skiers an opportunity to get a scholarship um, if they happen to choose a, a college that may not have a team or right, Florida or Southern right matter. here in Polk yeah. County right yeah. is one right. of them yeah you know and back in the day too when uh, when the foundation started they used to be the the fundraiser for mm -hmm. the US teams Right, and and that was one of their big and responsibilities. We've, and we've moved away from that, that, and I'm not quite sure why. But I think you know most yeah. of the foundations. You've got the governing body, which acts as the government. They sanction the events. Mm -hmm. They have their members, the insurance, and then you have the foundation that does the fundraising, the events, the programs, the mm -hmm. you know the scholarships that build that, and and gives back and supports the team, and it creates a great cycle, of once they become alumni, then they give back, and for some reason that somewhere along the way that divided and uh, we hope to definitely bring bring that back together and uh, like I say and we're drawing information from all our stakeholders this isn't going to be a decision just made by a small group of people we're really reaching out to get the input of mm -hmm. all of the stakeholders people, that have been involved uh, with this for yeah. many many years and uh, well I think you've got a good one too in, in uh, uh, Paul Chapin is your yes. uh, president you know Paul and I mm -hmm. boy we've been friends for 45 years, I guess, or acquaintances, friends, all that type of thing. In fact, we uh, ski together out in Aspen. Okay, yeah, great. We both lived out in Aspen okay. and worked for uh, Aspen Highlands. One of my favorite pictures of uh, me snow skiing was taken by Paul. We were, oh, wow. Okay. Well, we were sort of out of bounds and shouldn't have been doing <laughs> what we were doing, but it was... Uh, he, uh, he was a heck of a photographer. I don't know if you knew that or not. Oh, gosh, but, I didn't. I oh, mean. man, he took some great, great photos. but. 
Tracy, you've been around uh, Olympic and the international mm -hmm. scene for a long time, and each governing body is different. What particular challenges do you see ahead of you in the sport of water skiing, or maybe some advantages that water skiing has versus some of the other sports that you've seen? Well, you know, like many other sports, it's got the initial challenge of being a smaller sport mm -hmm. when you look at, at the grand scale of things. You know, it doesn't, you know, track and field now, you know, it's, you know, multi-million dollar budgets, you know, and, and water ski, kind of like some of the other, you know, you've got the rowing, you know, some of the others that are fantastic sports, but struggle with that you know, they're kind of lower on the totem pole. However, um, it's got a lot of potential individually. Um, there's a lot, 25 million water skiers in this country. Um, not all of them are competitive, but our foundation can reach out to to those. Um, we can, from grassroots program to supporting the U.S. teams, you know, from grassroots to the Hall of Fame, the beginning to the end, and we can reach out to, to those with various programs. And I think also, you know, the embracing kind of the wakeboarding that's coming up and the popularity of that and um, you know sometimes when a new kind of addition kind of comes on and become boom you know this popular it's you know it's got its challenges too but kind of embracing all of the all of the different disciplines that fall under USA water ski the nine disciplines and really embracing you know all of this I, and I'm really glad to hear you say that too because you know I'm not a big wakeboard guy mm -hmm. you know and um, I mean, I remember when uh, Tony Finn started uh, his scurfing on, on the Pro Tour, mm -hmm. you know, and we were all like, what the heck is this, you know? Right. And now look what it's grown grown into, and, and a lot of that credit needs to go to Tony, but, you know, and Hank, you, you see this all the time, and that wakeboard culture is a little bit different and sometimes right. a little tougher to swallow for some of the old guard. Right. But uh, uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, I think it's part of a solid strategic plan mm -hmm. heading into the future to yes. get that younger group on. So definitely, definitely. Well, that's 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 some great so stuff. We got to have you back on the show here. We've uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's, Burning through this segment. Oh, it's I mean, it's, you know, it's you know, it's a good one when it's just like, oh my gosh, you know, we've got to say <laughs> we have so much more to say. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, we're going to be meeting soon anyway. Yes, you and I yes. Will get together for uh, you know a few discussions on some things, and of course, uh, I'd love. You know, Hank needs to be involved in that, yes, that discussion too. Definitely. But, uh, in fact, uh, congratulations! You never told me about that, big boy. What's that? But you're on that. Uh, you're on our strategic planning just didn't committee. Read the email thoroughly enough that I sent you. <laughs> Must be fun working with you too. <laughs> I think so. I'll have to I'm thorough in my in. stuff. <laughs> Tracy, thanks so much for joining us. Wow, what Thank a delight! You. It's a pleasure Thank to you. have you in the county. Thank you. And uh, taking over. You know, of course, something near and dear to Hank and my heart. But uh, uh, we'll see you again soon. Wonderful. Thank okay. you very much. Thank Happy you. Happy to be Tracy. here. All right. You bet. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we have sort of a uh, special treat for you that we've been on here now for a few months, and that's an athlete spotlight. Brian Morales from Haines City Baseball. We talked baseball a little bit earlier, but probably not enough. But the footage is fantastic. You'll enjoy Brian. Check this out. Hank and Mark will be back right after this. And now, fans, the starting lineup for the Haines City Hornets. Leading off number five, center fielder Brian Morales. Uh, I started playing baseball when I was six. I moved from Puerto Rico here. And I had a, um, a cousin of mine that played baseball and he had me get involved with it and I started playing in Larry Parish. And ever since that, I've just kept playing. So it's been nine years and there's no quitting yet. <laughs> uh, I play center field. I'm also a left-handed pitcher. I ended up batting 398. Uh, I have like, I say nine stolen bases, but uh, that's all I know right now. If I had to describe myself in one word, it would be athletic because I'm known for being really athletic, uh, playing baseball since I was really little. Like everyone I know right now knows me because of how good I am when I'm on the field. Oh, my favorite athlete is Justin Upton for the Atlanta Braves. He reminds me of myself. We both play outfield. Uh, we both can hit the ball. I try to be like him sometimes, but yeah, just try to be myself all the time because you trying to be like someone else can probably mess up your the way you play. I'll say I used to run slow, 
But one of my biggest problems is I run a lot faster now. I ran a 6.5 on a 60-yard um, dash. I think hitting the weight room has me hitting the ball a lot harder. And I didn't get to play last year, so my biggest accomplishment right now is at least being able to play in the way I play and my batting average. My favorite subject in school is math because it's easy to me. I understand every little bit of it. I mean, it doesn't really bother me. When I enter math class, I know I'm going to get A's. And I can say my worst subject in school would be biology. I just don't like it. Other than baseball, my other activities I do, I play basketball. I played basketball for seven years, but other than that, I don't do anything else. But for right now, I'm giving up basketball and just sticking to baseball. After I graduate and I'm done playing high school baseball, I'm thinking about either hoping to either getting drafted or um, continuing my career playing college baseball. If not, then I'll go to study for um, sports management. We practice five days a week, well, six days a week. Uh, we practice for, I say, four and a half hours a day. We hit the weight room, say, two times a week, and we hit in the batting cage every day. That's mainly our batting, um, our practices. So we practice every day for like four hours a, a day. When I have free time, I do my homework at home and play the video game, MLB 13. And what gets me ready for a game, I'll say music, and the person I listen to would be Kid Ink. I don't know if you heard of him, but he's an artist and he just, I don't know, he gets me ready to play. He gets me pumped. My best friend would describe me as in crazy, happy, uh, athletic, talented. I mean, I don't know, a lot of things. Cause you know, I was, that's basically it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Sports Central, and man, that show went fast, <laughs> holy Boy, smoke. Boy, I'm telling you, it, it, when you get in these good conversations and you just wanna, you just get going and, and all of a sudden time flies right by and we're in our fourth segment already and we wanna thank the folks at Abuelos for being our sponsor in our final segment of Sports Central today. Absolutely. We're doing something a little bit different. A lot of you folks don't get a chance to see some of these folks behind the scenes ah, that yes. make all of this possible. And there's a pretty good sized crew of, uh, uh, you know, some of the most enjoyable people I've worked with in the television yeah. industry. Yeah, great and, folks uh, to work I with. Just don't think that uh, citizens of Polk County realize the talent that we have here and uh, that's part of this group. One of the guys, his name is Joe Cutler. And Joe, come on up. We want to. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of, this is a news show in some ways, and you can stand right over here behind us. This guy right here is, is actually part of the sports marketing crew, and uh, Joe is leaving us, and he's going to Triple Crown Sports in Fort Collins, Colorado. We actually launched his, helped launch his career, yeah, Joe. Yeah, I appreciate that. But appreciate you have done a marvelous job for us, and uh, you. you're kind of directing the show and scheduling the guests and all that type of stuff. You had a lot of fun? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you, you actually live in Tampa, but you're moving to Fort Collins, and yep. you know, you're just down the road a little, or up the road a little bit from the U.S. Olympic Committee. Yeah. Uh, Colorado Springs, come, uh, come see me when you're out there. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's. Yeah, well, yeah, we're going to plan our ski vacation, ski vacation right now. We're staying at his house. We're staying at Joe's. Got a free place to stay. I'll, I'll get a two-bedroom. You guys can. Okay, Joe. Room. Thanks so much for all you've thanks. done for uh, Polk County Joe. Tourism and Been Sports. Great. And uh, it's it's amazing. We have some very talented folks, and and this is one of them. Everybody. We have so many things on our plate, um, and on the plate of of Polk County that's literally dumping new money into the. Uh, into the county, these visitors come in, they just basically drop off bucket loads of money into our local businesses, make us all better off. And yeah. uh, we've got to be grateful and very thankful for that. We want to thank our sponsors and these ah. folks that stay with us show after show. Legoland Florida, Bright House Networks, Hall Communications, the Florida Department of Citrus and the Ledger. Thank you all so much for your support. Yeah, great partners and uh, these are our organizations that ultimately give back to the community. Well, everybody, our next live show will be July 12th, three days before the National Softball Association Girls Fast Pitch World Series. And uh, I'm telling you, that's gonna be a great event. But if you can't just get enough, Hank and Mark, 
you know, and that show, well, you can check us out daily following dates and times on PGTV. This is Mark Jackson for Hank Longo. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you again next time.